Everybody, we're going to call this meeting to order. We have Rich Niles who's coming in. He's one of the engineers who's working with Carolyn Brennan on the dive. Carolyn could not make it today. Uh, she has asked Rich to join in. Now, prior to that, Jackson, do you want to say why you're here? Yeah, beautiful. How's it going, everybody? I'm Jackson Meager. I'm a senior at UMass Amherst. Um, first, I guess thank you all for coming. Feels cool that you guys are taking on some initiative because I'm also taking on some initiative on my side of town. Um, I'm making a, we're making, this is Danielle and Ryan with us, we're making a 30 minute documentary about climate change and how it's impacted local Western Massachusetts farmers and the local Western Massachusetts community. And we're taking it with a student scope so that we are trying to, you know, change the minds of students and have it be both informative, but also, uh, I don't know, like engaging for the students. Um, that's why students making it, it feels kind of good to give them that perspective. Uh, today, we just talked to Jack for a little bit, but we're hoping if it's okay with all of you, we could uh, film some of the meeting just to get some insight and some B-roll to show what's going on in the inner workings, as well as if anyone wants to, uh, I don't know, I guess, help out any sort of insight, any sort of opinions is really helpful for us to get a better understanding of what's happening from the community. Well, and you have at least two farmers here that um, you can could help with. out. I'd love to connect with some farmers if that works, if, if anyone... Uh, I don't know who the farmers are quite yet, but yeah. Um, first off, is everyone okay if we were to film some of this meeting? It's public meeting. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess it's getting filmed either way, so you might as well get it. Get it on better it's angle. Thank you for that. Um, also, I'm going to have to run out fairly soon, but Ryan's going to be here, so if you'd like to get involved, uh, just like hearing other opinions and hearing different perspectives on it is super impactful. Um, if you want to talk to Ryan after the meeting or even talk yeah. to me personally, I can put my phone number, email me notes or something like that and you can reach me. But any sort of insight, any sort of help goes a long way. And hopefully this will not only be impactful for the Western Massachusetts community, but also students all over. Um, so thank you for allowing me to have some of your time. I guess all that has to go on with your meeting. Thank but again, you. thank you so much. All right, and Randy, welcome. Glad you're with us. Thank you. I wanted to tell everybody who I am and why I'm here. All right. Or I could do it. Why don't you do it? I'm Randy Eiser from the Select Board. I am the new liaison between the Select Board and the Climate Change Committee. And we have a guest here today. Uh, we had hoped that Carolyn could join us. It didn't work out with her timing, but we have Rich Niles who is with us today, and he can bring us up to date on what's happening with the Dyke Project. Yes. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, can you hear me OK? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Um, I didn't really pull together a presentation. I just thought I would talk about the project, <clears throat> excuse me, status. Um, and I don't know. I just want to ask, how much time do I have? Um, I could talk all night, but that's not what you want. So. <laughs> <laughs> We're planning about a half hour, and we didn't expect a presentation, um, okay. but probably we'll get some questions from the <clears throat> audience. Yeah, I figured I figured I'd allow that uh, time. I just do an uh, overview of where we stand, and I can show some maps and some different things to help illustrate the convers or uh, facilitate conversation as well. So, uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Rich Niles. I'm a project manager with Woodard and Kern. Uh, engineering firm that uh, I have been working with Hadley since 2014. Uh, some work at my prior firm <clears throat> on the levy project itself. So there was a um, sort of series of assessments that had been done historically. And um, that was uh, the sort of the basis of the current project that we have now. Um, so town meeting, I believe it was 2021 town meeting was authorized funding for uh, this study that we're currently doing. And so I'll provide a quick overview of the study. Um, the schedule is, is different than what was originally anticipated, and and I'll explain why. And um, but I think Carolyn wanted to just 
for me to provide a, uh, an update where we stand. Um, you know, we don't have final results on on some of these tasks. So, uh, but it's it's coming soon. So, so the um, and um, we actually were able to leverage an opportunity with the Army Corps of Engineers to provide some additional support for the project, which is really nice. So um, we took that opportunity along the way. And so I'll, I'll talk about that too. Um, so really, I, I guess, um, let me just, uh, I think I can share my screen. It's always easier to talk from a map and then you don't have to just look at me. <laughs> um, so um, let me see here, I just, I need to get oriented here. I swear I do this for a living, but I, I work. we work off of Teams platform primarily. So I've got to switch gears sometimes. There should be a green button in the middle for you to share screen. Yeah. You guys see that now? Can you see my screen? Yep. Yes. OK. So um, this is a, a, a figure from a historic report you know, the, when we talk about the levy system, we talk about, um, and, and I know it's locally referred to as the dike, um, <clears throat> but we call it a levy system. That's sort of the FEMA context definition. And so it's really what's along the river, which people are most familiar with. And then it comes um, cross country, ties into the rail trail. And that's this yellow line you see here. So I refer to that as, as Hadley's levy system. Um, so it, this is what is mapped by FEMA as providing protection against the 100-year flood. So the 100-year base flood elevation um, considers this um, existing system. <clears throat> and what FEMA is in the process of doing, which you may be familiar with, this process started a couple of years ago. Um, they have what's called the um, levy assessment and map um, mapping procedure. Here, here we go. This is my, my next uh, illustration here. So this um, information has been presented to the town. So maybe this might be new to some people um, in this meeting, but this is a process that, that FEMA has been undertaking for the last several years to basically remap the floodplains um, to consider new data. The effective base flood elevation maps are from 1978. So that's what we go off of now. And so if you need to get flood insurance, that's what the basis of, of that determination um, if you have a federally backed mortgage. It also provides information around risk associated with flooding and, and the areas that could be subject to flooding in these larger severe events, the base flood elevation. And so, um, so FEMA's in the process of remapping, that coincided kind of with the start of our project. Our project is really looking at, um, you know, what does this mean in terms of, of the remapping process, we know that past assessments have identified deficiencies. And when I say deficiencies, it means it doesn't meet all the current design criteria uh, that FEMA has in place. And so this, this map shows some of that former assessment and says, okay, we get a low spot over here. So we call that freeboard where you need to have a certain amount of height of the levee above the base flood elevation um, in order to say it's it's adequately providing protection for that particular event, so that um, that those deficiencies also um, relate to slope stability and and what we call seepage. So <clears throat> the it's an earthen berm um, when it has water up against it, it um, obviously saturates it to some extent. And the berm has to have a certain geometry or configuration so that it's stable during those flood events and as the water recedes. And so there are pretty high criteria and factors of safety that FEMA likes to see, and that's their design criteria. So we did those historic evaluations. Well, I did when I was at my prior firm. And we identified issues with the, the freeboard, the height of it, as well as the slope stability and seepage. So we did, I don't know if people remember, we did drilling, we had drill rig, a uh, drill rig on the levee, you know, and we assessed the soil conditions, which had never been done before. You know, this is a system that was built in the early 1920s, uh, late, late 1920s rather. And so, um, so that information told us, well, we don't meet some of the FEMA criteria. It's not the end of the world, but it will be challenging to certify the levy to meet FEMA criteria. And that has implications from an insurance perspective, but also um, FEMA then looks at that and says, well, if you don't meet criteria, 
we're going to map it as if it doesn't exist. And so that's not meant to be scary. It's just that, you know, we can't credit it essentially. We can't say it meets the criteria. So that's part of this process that FEMA is undertaking. And they looked at all the information that, that we gathered. We worked with FEMA to say, okay, make sure you're looking at everything that has been done so far. And I'll, I'll skip to some of the, some of the information here that, you know, the study that what they considered. Um, and then what they ended up doing was, was they said, well, based upon the new model, so they have a, a riverine model for the watershed that says, you know, based upon current conditions, changes in the watershed, um, you know, precipitation changes that are that we now recognize as kind of today. Um, for this type of flood event, the flood elevation is increasing. So flood depths will be higher during the base flood elevation, the FEMA base flood elevation. And what that meant was, you know, this these elevations you see in blue are the 1978 elevation and the, the green is is the increase so there's a three foot increase in some areas and when you look at this here i'll zoom in a little bit more and and hopefully um hopefully i'm not moving too fast here but the the uh darker shaded area that you see here is is the 100 year base flood elevation and the reason you see this shape is that's that's the levee itself providing protection so this portion of the levee system provides protection for this area in the middle. And this area is designated as the 500 year floodplain. So what this means with this remapping process is the levee is no longer tall enough to meet their criteria. And we knew it was marginally meeting free board requirements before, but there's definitely there's implications here. In addition to that, there are issues with the slope embankments that would need to be um, in some ways reconstructed. So that was sort of the impetus. Um, we knew this was coming. We developed the current project to better understand where Hadley should go with this. And in terms of, you know, can we meet FEMA criteria? What does that cost um, to do those improvements? Now we know we need to look at a higher elevation in addition to the slope geometry um, we know we have some issues with um, bank erosion in a couple areas in the upper reaches of the levee here. So there's some um, remedial measures that need to be undertaken. We're going to look at the cost of those. So what what does sure. it mean? Yes, sorry. I think you're you you don't have the we're not looking at the map you're pointing to. I don't think. Oh boy. Um, I, I thought I heard you say you were going to put up a second map and we're looking at the first one. Or can you scroll down on this page? Yeah, there's no blue lines. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks for stopping me. So you're seeing the map yeah. that has... We're seeing the figure two. Okay. So let me let me open the other one and tell me if it changes. Guess not. All right, let me let me stop sharing and reshare. Sorry about that. I don't think so. It's not. It's not. So that can you guys see that now? Yeah, much better. Okay. This is the one additional data collection. That's what we're seeing. Yes, I, I, I'm sorry. So the last five minutes would have been really challenging to follow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I've I've got three screens open. And I'm trying to pull these things up, but uh, and I'm clearly challenged with Zoom at the moment. Um. So what I was referring to was the the uh, this is the sort of the footprint of the levee. Can you see my cursor? Yeah. So the the darker gray is the hundred year flood elevation and 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 limit of the hundred year flood, um, and then the lighter gray is the five hundred. So this is essentially what's protected this interior area, which is protected by the levee currently, as is currently mapped. So the remapping process by FEMA is taking a look at new information, new data, 
and they're projecting the elevation to be two to three feet higher. So this is going to be remapped. And so that remapping looks like this down here. I'll get to it in a second. Um, can you see this natural valley scenario? So now the 100 year floodplain looks like this. They it, it, it remap it as if this the levy doesn't exist. So that sounds scary, but what it means is is that it you're they're not recognizing the levy as providing protection against this particular flood scenario, which is the hundred year flood. So there's implications in terms of you know real risk, but there's also insurance implications because it's now mapped within the floodplain. And this is something we've talked about in past reports. Um, you know, how, do we do we look at how to protect this area, enhance this area to meet FEMA's criteria, so FEMA will remap it as if this is still providing protection. So, um, you know, so th there's obviously to meet the criteria, there's a cost associated with that. The remapping process has indicated that it needs to be taller, in addition to some of those stability issues I mentioned. It doesn't mean that the system still doesn't have a lot of value in providing flood protection for a lot of events. So I want that to, you know, people to not get scared that this is, you know, that it's not something we want to continue to invest in. We want to make sure that we're maintaining the system at a minimum uh, for what it is so that it provides some level of, of protection. And just as a frame of reference, um, River flow associated with the 100 year flood event is about 180,000 CFS cubic feet per second. That's much water moves down the river during that flood event. And that's what results in that floodplain. When you think back to like the 1984 flood or 1960 flood, those are some of the highest floods on record. In recent years, the, the higher flood events have been the 1926 and 28, I believe. Um, so, but in terms of so recent 36 and 38 36 38 yeah. i'm sorry yes 36 38 yeah question, um, question the, what we're looking at now is is like through a keyhole uh about three years ago there was a presentation by uh the corps of engineers at the jones library in amherst and uh we looked at the whole town this is not alarming, but if you look at the whole town raising it, it is substantial. For example, the Mill River backs up in the in North Hadley. It would go over the dam and back up way uh, almost to the UMass campus. And you go north more, and it appears, and they made a slip say, but it appears that they're looking to expand the parameters of the floodplain in order to collect more insurance because the FEMA uh, fund, trust fund from the insurance is almost broke. So we're only looking at one section of town. A lot of us live in the north section of Hadley. So how would that affect us? Um, so this work really focused around the levy portion, and, and this is the area of town that, that's impacted the greatest in terms of infrastructure. So uh, our study area does not include that. Uh, FEMA is remapping th those areas too. This, this particular presentation doesn't, doesn't provide that, so I, I can't zoom out to that portion. Um, Rich, can, can you explain where that blue line is? What street is that? Is that 47? Dells Middle Street, yeah. Oh, okay. Yellow to Dells Middle Street. All right. It yeah. It. yeah. So I, I understand your your um your comment and concern in terms of you know, so FEMA, when they do remapping, they're trying to map it based upon the best available data. And and, and there are insurance implications in terms of participation in the national flood insurance program. So what it means is, is you're eligible for relief, but you have to buy it, right? So flood insurance is a recovery method. It's not flood protection. So what we're focusing on for this area of town is, is how do we look at this existing flood protection system and so that we can enhance it to meet certain criteria, some of which would be, you know, one metric would be meeting FEMA's criteria. So 
that you don't have to purchase insurance. And, and that's really driven by whether you have a federally backed mortgage. Um, you're required to, if not, and you own it outright or privately, um, then you don't need to purchase insurance, although you may want to. Um, you so, won't get a mortgage if you don't purchase, purchase insurance. Yeah, ge generally because it's federally backed, right? So for the most part, yeah, unless it's, unless it's privately financed another way. So the, How do you, you handle know, compensation storage from the neighboring communities? I'm on the planning board and we don't allow any filling in according to FEMA regulations of anything that is in the, uh, the flood way or the, the hundred year flood of record. So if you all of a sudden build higher levees or do extra work, how do you justify that? It's against the FEMA regulations. Yeah. No, it's not. It's uh, you have to do compensatory storage. But so I, I mean, this is this That's is getting right. this is where are you going to dig the hole to to compensate? So, um, this is getting into the details of the results of the study. I, I'm not sure we have time to, to okay. do that. Uh, I mean, we 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 ha it's a separate project. I mean, this is meant to be an update to the project. So I'm trying to be respectful of everybody's time at the same time, not not entertain these questions I, I but this is I'm, I'm trying to frame the project a little bit um these are some of the major issues that we're trying to evaluate so um if you increase flood protection by blocking the floodplain that's that's a resource area and so there's an environmental component to this that is really significant and so we talk about increasing height of levee and bumping out sidewalls to make it more stable you're you're going to fill areas that are that are considered uh, storage, right? So part of what we're looking at in this study, and I just don't have the numbers yet. Uh, we'll have them really soon, and so that's why I, I don't want to um, dismiss the comments and and move on and gloss over. But this is really getting into the results of the study that we're still just wrapping up some of that information. But one of those is to look at, you know, within Wetlands Protection Act, within um, you know other environmental regulations. You, you look at compensatory storage in terms of these larger events and does it have a substantial impact on your neighbors? So what your neighbor does along the river affects other people. And so if we were to look at something to enhance this flood protection system or extend it, and that's what we're also looking at is extending it, that has an impact on the base flood elevations in this area. And, and we have the ability to, to look at that and model that. So we have FEMA's model. We have the best available data. And that was part of what delayed things a little bit is we knew FEMA was remapping this. And we said, well, why don't we get your model so we know what you're, you're looking at? And then we'll do all our alternative analysis as part of the study to see what impact does that result in and do a little scenario planning. So this is a this is a planning project, and so these are all like these are all really great comments and valid comments and concerns that we're trying to address as part of that. Um, and I think if I had a presentation that was just the current every item in the project, which we just haven't finished, it would it would probably be more clear, and we, we would need a two hour workshop to go through it. But the um, what we're also considering is is not just how do we enhance the current system. And, and again, there would have to be some level of mitigation from an environmental permitting standpoint to do that. And we don't want to understand the impacts of that. And so we're trying to quantify that. And then we're also looking at, well, that's a big investment. What is it protecting? And this is not to say that this is not worth protecting, but it is a significant cost to do these, these types of projects. And we have to we have to weigh the benefit of that. So we're trying to quantify the cost and the benefit of improving this, the current system. At the same time, you know, the rail trail is something that has a lot of challenges in terms of improvements there. If we go in and, and start to look at the rail trail as a berm that's providing flood protection, to meet FEMA and Army Corps criteria, we have to cut everything within 15 to 20 feet of the toe, can't have trees along it, and we have to reconstruct the embankments to be more stable, and we have to raise the height of it. I don't think that's a worthwhile investment, nor does the town desire to dramatically change the character of that, but we're gonna quantify the cost to do so for, for argument's sake. And then we're also gonna look at, well, 
what about a alternative that looks at providing flood protection along Bay Road or somewhere beyond Bay Road that would then provide flood protection for the entire downtown? And is that investment better and provide more benefit, even though it's a greater investment, does that provide more benefit to the town? And, and again, that would have even more environmental impact at the same time. So those are the things that we're, we're evaluating right now with our current scope of work. And so we will have better information to share with you. So I, I, ho I hope that that's helpful, that we're not ignoring these things. We, we acknowledge that that is um, this economic feasibility component to this. There's a um, environmental feasibility component. And so we're trying to quantify that with the available funding that we have to do this. And our hope is that we provide information on some alternatives and the cost and benefit so that we can then say, okay, well, <clears throat> this needs further evaluation for this alternative to get it into some level of planning or design. This project, the results of our project, we hope will have more clarity around that. And the town can then make a better decision as to how they wanna move forward. The nice thing is, is Army Corps, um, we, we worked with them to try to find funding to support all this work. It's really tough um, because we don't have a, like a, a, a truly well-defined project. Um, at the moment, we're just looking at kind of some of these alternatives, um, but they were able to provide what they call their Silver Jackets program support from a technical standpoint. They have a team uh, that, that uh, specializes in, in flood risk communication, understanding these issues. And so th these are these are challenging conversations to understand the technical aspects, the impacts, and then try to have enough information to make good decisions across the community. But that's um, a sort of a project that's supporting this project that if Army Corps has funded for you guys. Um, so that's nice, it's a grant. And um, we're just kicking that off. And actually we have a site visit or a site walk we're gonna do with Army Corps and the whole team uh, next Friday, the 17th. Um, so that's something that, um, you know, we're gonna work through that process. There'll be, there's a public engagement um, component to all that so that we can present this information and we can have more detailed discussions. I just, I just don't know if we have enough time to, to get too far into the details um, on this meeting. So, um, so Rich, we have about 10 minutes or so of your time. I know some people in the past have said the real concern isn't just flooding sort of on the north part of town, but, you know, backfilling from the south. You had addressed that a little bit, that zone AE, you know, the water coming up from the south and um, flooding yeah. that way. Yep. Um, so, like, what are your next steps? I know you said you have the site visit with the Army Corps coming up, but how do you move forward with this? So, so um, <clears throat> basically what we've done is we've taken FEMA's model. We've updated the information around this levy to see what height does it need to be to meet the, the new elevation? What does that result in to meet the new geometry? Um, what's the cost associated with that? So those things, I, I, I'm, I'm actually ahead of me with the team this week and, and they're gonna give me a draft report next week. So <clears throat> that's the schedule is that we have some information that we'll be able to share with the town and uh, this month and the next couple of weeks. And that is gonna look at um, a few scenarios. One of which is improving this system to meet criteria. What would that level of investment be? The next is what if we constructed another extension to this levy all along here, what's the cost associated with that? And then what's the protected area and the benefit to all these properties? And we can quantify that to some extent by avoided loss or insurance premium, you know, because these properties are paying insurance right now and they have real risk associated with, with real flood events that could occur and they don't have a, a barrier. So we're looking at that alternative, the cost and the benefit of that. And we're looking at, because of the environmental constraints, you've got uh, another stream system here. You know, we, we, we wanna look at different alignments of that levy. So we've conceptualized those and we're applying costs to those. And we're trying to look at the benefit of that. <clears throat> and so that information will be available um, in the coming weeks. 
And that's mm -hmm. part of the process with Army Corps to then communicate that and engage, engage the public more. Rich, can you say with any kind of certainty, are all those people around West Street and those other areas, are they paying flood insurance, flood premiums? They're paying flood insurance yeah. right up to the uh, rail trail. Hmm. Yep. Well, up to West Street. It was over yeah. the rail trail, but of the compensation dams up north, and Joe probably has some comments about that. Uh, there's a plaque on the southwest corner of Russell Street where the 38 flood was, and it was really up to the town hall steps. But because of the flood control dams up north, they reduced it by two feet. So that's why uh, it's back to where it is. And it did flood in 36 and 38. <clears throat> they want to expand it more now all over town. If you saw the whole map, you would be frightened. I mean, you talk about North Hadley, and uh, it's it's incredible. But I think that's a ploy to get more people in the floodplain to get more uh, insurance money so FEMA can, and well, FEMA's wings get clipped, who knows? But I still don't understand how we can override all the rules we've been following for years by putting, building up Bay Road and, and Middle Street and fixing the rail trail. And that seems like it's going against all the FEMA rules and regulations they've had for years because you're diverting the water theoretically to Hatfield and Northampton. Mm -hmm. Well, so so um, so you're you're right, and and part of what we would need to consider with any work beyond just maintaining what's there um, is is uh, mitigation. So with with impact, environmental impacts, flood storage loss comes the requirement for mitigation, and where we can provide mitigation is is challenging, and mitigation costs a lot of money. Um, so that's those are some of the things that we need to contemplate. Now, FEMA is interested in providing real flood protection. So they are interested in communities pursuing options to, and they will fund the projects to provide increased flood protection. Um, you know, with that comes obviously uh, impact that would need to be addressed at all permitting levels. So these, a project of this magnitude um, would trigger pretty much every permit requirement in the book. So, um, they definitely don't want to downplay that that challenge, and and for those reasons, um, that's why largely a lot of these projects haven't been built in recent decades. You know, so um, so you know, so there's again, like I said, there's a few things. Maintaining what you have is important, and I want to make sure that we, you know, have some understanding of the level of cost to do that. Whether the town can meet FEMA's criteria, um, is that worthwhile? Uh, if you don't meet it, what's the consequence? Um, if we were to look at a similar level of investment, so if you don't, if you don't invest in improving the rail trail, well, what would this investment look like? It's a lot more money, maybe, but it would also provide a lot more protection. Is it feasible? That's those are the questions we're trying to answer. So, um, really good points, and um, I, I wish I had more results to share with you. But that's uh, Rich, that's where we stand. That's where we stand with the project. Which we have a few other community members who are here. Um, some of them live right up against the blue line, um, and they very well may have some questions for you. Sure. Just a one. You know the difference in the height elevation between the levee on the Connecticut River and the bike path. The difference in height. Um, it's it's pretty close. Um, let me just. Um, let me, I, I may have to stop sharing and then do it again. Uh, so are you, are you looking at the figure two? I think I need to stop sharing and then. Yeah. 126, 125. Yeah. Okay, let me do this again. That's 125 feet above sea level. <clears throat> Correct, All right. And how much is the, the, the rail trail? So is these black dots represent survey points along the system and so it is it is pretty close to the same elevation all around 
And it's deceiving because the embankments, as you go further up, uh, further east along the rail trail, it eventually ties into basically natural high ground, right? The ground elevation comes up, so the rail trail height decreases. But it's relatively flat throughout here. There is a low spot at this at this location here at West Street. Um, and as you go west and then north, the height of the levee increases because the ground surface elevation is lower. But it is pretty close to the same within about a foot, foot and a half. I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is you talk about the uh, height going from like 125 to 128. Is there a timetable for that? Um, the timetable for that is is current conditions. That's so basically that's the result that FEMA has from their remapping. So the 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 old elevation is really the effective mapping, but is based upon mapping that was done in 1978. So based upon the new information, new data, it, current conditions, they're saying the model is indicating that the elevation is now two feet higher. So the new flood elevation is that 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 greater number. Now, when these maps take effect, and I know FEMA remapping is very controversial, it's very, very political, um, and people, you know, suspect different motives and, and you know, and so it's, it's, a, it's a bit challenging to understand how the process works. It does take quite a bit of time before those things are effective, so people won't have to go out and buy flood insurance tomorrow. Um, these maps take sometimes several years to become finalized and effective. And there's a public review process and all that. So this is very, this is again, this is very preliminary. The, the nice thing is, is that we we have access to the data through this project and we can review it and have these conversations. Um, now, this is the Climate Change Committee, right? So we can talk about that a little bit if you want. I just wanted to answer more questions from others if, if, if you guys Let's have. Let's see if there's more questions because we have some people with a lot on the line here. Um, if we run into some flooding. Well, the question was, it needs to be raised up three feet and then after a certain angle or pitch and somehow reinforce. But Joe was saying within the consequence uh, storage, that would affect that. So if one is contradicting the other, is there, if this is done after, you know, raising it up three feet, um, what are the drawbacks? Because this is actually done which we've been told we can't do for so many years. What would happen to saying with the town, well, you changed everything within the bylaws, even though, or whatever, how it goes. We all know if it's, the blue line is gonna change if it's not raised up. But then after, if it is raised up, what's gonna happen after that? Like you said, is it gonna affect Hatfield? Is it gonna ha affect Northampton? And what's it gonna do with uh, Aquavita? Yeah, all of those right. things. Yeah, so so just to um, I I we will be able to provide better numbers on that, but it is a um in terms of of the total elevation of the river in this system. So this is a big river. It takes a lot of floodplain loss to make a, a significant impact on on elevation. So the preliminary results we're seeing are somewhere in the order of, of an eighth of a foot in some areas. Um, looking at the full alternative, which is the new Bay Road levee. So don't hold me to that number because it's still not <laughs> final QC'd, but, and again, these are all estimates, but um, raising the height of the current levee, even with some fill, because think about it, you, if you place fill on this side, it doesn't change any flood elevation. You know, you raise the height of it, all you're doing is keeping the water where it already was, it's just not spilling over anymore now. So when you fill on this landward side or the, or the sorry, the river side, which is the floodplain side, yeah, you're going to be filling an area that that was storage for, flo uh, for flood flows, but that's, a, it's a really small volume by comparison to this overall area. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the improvements to the current system as it stands 
would have any significant impact on flood elevation. So whether it's allowed to occur, FEMA wants you to do these things. Regulatory agencies will allow it if you provide um, comp uh, compensatory storage or you know what I would call just general mitigation. But that's generally what it would be for this project. Um, you can do that. So we can look at alternatives for mitigation. Um, one alternative would be you raise the height, but you pull it back. And so, you, you know, this is, these are fields and I understand, you know, there's people's land, um, you know, and so saying that some additional area may flood, um, but that could be, you know, the, it, it's not desirable, but that could be the alternative for mitigation is, is we pull this back for a portion and regain some flood storage. Yeah, so we don't necessarily have to go dig holes everywhere, but we could look at regaining some of the flood storage where that flood protection is maybe not needed. You know, so there are ways to to address mitigation. So that's, that again, something we'll be able to answer with more information and have a more detailed discussion on. But just because you're improving flood protection doesn't mean you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot necessarily. Quick comment regarding uh, mitigation. On the opposite side of the river uh, was a, a washing out of their dike and Actually, some of our Navy, I mean, our, our dive team from the fire department went down deep and they found where the river was cutting underneath the levee and they filled it in with huge boulders, rocks. So presented, this is what we have to look at first. If that dike is going to fail, not we're not talking water running over the top. It's where it was breached. And <clears throat> you can see almost where that sign was, where it was breached in 38. But you could put huge boulders down into the uh, to the area where it is potentially undercutting the dike like it did 100 yards upstream, or like they do at, in the Mississippi and the Atchafalaya River in Louisiana, they take I-beams and they just put them down 50, 60 feet so they won't wash. Uh, there, I think before we raise the dike, you got to see where the problem is and see how we can simply fix it, not you know, raise it three feet. And, and, and. No, so that's you, you, <clears throat> so that was the I, first. That was the first. I didn't go to engineering school either. So no, no, no. You, you, no, you hit you hit all the right things actually. Um, so what you described is is what was partially done with the repair that was done in the early two thousands, or I'm sorry, it wasn't two thousand two thousand ten, two thousand nine, two thousand ten, right? The, the dike repair that was completed just um, yeah, west of true. just west of West Street. Oh, that was yeah. um, so sheeting metal sheeting was driven into the uh, stream bed or riverbed oh. in order to prevent what we call scour. So scour is is when the the river undercuts the bank, right. and and we call the toe of the levee or toe of the river is that portion and it can undercut and scour and then you have a collapse uh, and, a, and a dramatic failure um we we have not done a full survey of that because we haven't had the conditions and the budget to do so that is a risk and so we acknowledge that we also know that we have areas like up here at the beginning of the levee that the, this is where the levee or the river turns this is where a lot of force occurs, where scour is more likely to occur. So you can those see the back, back area where our dump was, that's where it it washed out. Mm -hmm. right, right there. No, back, back, right there. Back, oh, yeah, yeah, right, 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 right there. there. Mm -hmm. right, right there. Yeah. So, Rich, what's what's your timeline? When will you have something to put forward to the town? So. Um, I was just going to, I was looking back at the, um, at the, we're trying to align some of our work with um, the work that Army Corps is doing. And I do have a, uh, a project work plan from them. So we're just kicking it off next week. Um, and then uh, I'm just looking at, I'm going to look at their timeline real quick. Just bear with me for a second. And you um, could pre present to the select board, the overall map of Hadley that a uh, couple of us saw a few years ago at the Jones Library in Amherst, uh, because it's the town is more than just this little triangle here. Mm -hmm. 
No, I, I understand, but this is this was the, it, we can do that, but this is the scope of work that we have under contract. So it really does just, focus on, just on this the map portion. that they had. I mean, you don't have yeah. to. Yeah, 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 no, we don't need to do any analysis, but we can we can definitely do that. Um, so the project initiation, the, the schedule for Army Corps was to basically do um, develop community outreach materials in March to June, conduct the outreach in July and August, and then um, finish the project in September from Army Corps perspective. So they want to take our results and put that into their schedule and process. I think we could start to present our results, um, certainly uh, working with Carolyn and Scott and DPW to review that. We're going to be reviewing that with them this month. Um, and I, you know, I think we we want to be strategic in the outreach of this information so that people don't misinterpret. You know, one of the biggest challenges is understanding what all this means, what FEMA is doing, what we're doing, what the town's options are. But um, one, just to get to your to your comment around the concern about the existing system you know just fixing what you have is these are not inexpensive efforts there's a lot of permitting and there's a lot of costs associated with that so driving and sheeting boulders slope stability it, it it's expensive so this is a you know to repair some of these areas and and protect it from issues like scour like that it's those are multi-million dollar projects that's the magnitude we're starting at for this type of work now there's a lot of benefit to that. So we have to consider the benefit to the community, but, and we also wanna make sure we're investing so it doesn't continue to degrade, that we protect the asset. Um, it is a piece of infrastructure. And so, um, you yeah, know, we're gonna help quantify that. And and the, at a minimum, the level of maintenance needs to increase. You know, so we're developing an operations and maintenance plan that'll be available soon. And that's gonna outline all the different things that need to be done from inspections to mowing, you know, to, to spot repairs, things like that. Um, but major bank work for erosion issues and scour is, is expensive. And this has been the challenge is, so how do we have enough information so that the community to make decisions about investment and also take those projects and try to find funding outside sources of funding. And so that's a really big focus. And so we acknowledge that none of this is cheap this study is hopefully going to put you guys in a better position <clears throat> to understand flood risk, to uh, develop a pathway with some recommendations to explore further or, or initiate some projects and um, use that information to, to try to secure some funding. So I, hopefully that the schedule, is that helpful? Like in terms of the timeline here, I mean, kind of six or eight weeks from now, I'd have, I'd probably have like a full presentation for you. <laughs> um, so are there other That's, questions that, that it's something to consider too if you can put that full presentation out for the community you know if there's a saturday or something like that so so many more members of the community can hear it's this a larger map like where, where do we have to fly you know people are going to want to know i guess there are areas that yeah. who manages who manages the, the, the flow and the control of the river That's what is that the army corps or is that <clears throat> who's in charge of the minute there's 13 dams on the river uh they're owned by different companies they don't communicate uh we have flooded in north hadley on a sunny day one time um there's no communication and there's no real management is it possible to do a better job of managing the river and like and the holyoke dam is 28 feet tall with six foot flashboards um i mean is there any way to that when you hold back that volume of water, the length of the river, that's a lot of water. It, it might be easier to lower the flashboards than to build the tower up. Yeah, I mean, so so um, dam control is something that's been brought up. Um, it does have an effect of mitigating some of the highest flows. And so when you look at the, the so there's there's stream gauge data associated with the river that goes back to the to the um, the 1920s. And we look and part of the studies that we've done in the past, we look at that flow data and we, we know when dams were constructed and we see a change in flow. We see a change in those peak flows. So the dams have had the effect of mitigating some of those high flows. FEMA doesn't always recognize that because if the dams aren't managed as such, a lot of these dams, they're managed for energy purposes. 
Turner Falls is a big one, you know. So those are managed by private companies. So to answer your question, there's not a cohesive coordination effort of flood management. <clears throat> when it comes to really large events, those dams only provide so much anyway. It's going to flood no matter what. Can it mitigate some of the smaller events? Probably, and it, and it already has mitigated those. So if they weren't in place, the flows would be higher and we'd be looking at conditions that would likely be you know, higher elevations. Um, but it's a, it's a great comment and <clears throat> it's something that we're going to talk to Army Corps about. There's also programs, uh, I know FEMA is working on a program with the National Weather Service on um, coordinated information and uh, with communities on alert systems for flood um, response and, and conditions. You know, so there's, there's a lot to be desired in terms of the communication of those things. Um, and, um, you know, we're going to, we're not going to be able to, to model that and, 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 and really evaluate it in detail, but it's something that we're going to make a recommendation for. And we'd like to, um, I mean, those are comments that the public, I, I would welcome those at, at some of the upcoming meetings with Army Corps. So there, there will be a, a pretty robust engagement process um, with us, with Army Corps. So um, it, it's just not, we're just not there yet. So that, that's coming very soon. At least we know they're yeah. doing. So. Rich, as you get closer, if you remember, send an email. We'll certainly get this committee, you know, tuned in to what's going on and what you discover. Yeah, and and I I wish I had uh, something more concrete to share. Like we we were hoping to have our meeting two weeks ago with Army Corps. I'm trying to align our our project with theirs, and so there's a lot of there's a lot of, a lot of good things. I mean, the the, the fact that we have this study. And the, and the information we have now is going to be very helpful for the community. Um, you know, we I just can't, we just haven't released that yet in terms of, of sharing that. We want to make sure we have the schedule right and we have all the right pieces so we can communicate that properly. So it's not that we're not we're withholding information. We're just some of it is not done yet. And we just recently engaged with Army Corps. Um, yeah, so we've been waiting to kick that off. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for your yeah. time tonight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Look forward. Look forward to um, preventing, or I'm sorry, providing more results in the future. Um, I, I know. <laughs> I can't promise preventing floods. <laughs> We'd like to. That's that's a that's a big goal. Um, so um, yeah. So I, I I appreciate everybody's time and the thoughtfulness, and and we definitely you know this is part of the process that that we, we intend to incorporate into this. And ultimately it's, you know, we're trying to provide technical information for the town to make decisions on how they wanna move forward with, with any type of project, so. Did you have a time on when you and the Silver Jackets, when you're walking around on the 17th, is that open to the public? Um, we haven't, because honestly, I haven't even met some of these people. So um, it's, it's, it's a good sized group of people. I'll, I'll ask them and see. I'm not sure if that's something that's going to be advertised. You know, part of um, you know, it's it's kind of like more like a staff meeting type thing. It's not it's not a um, open public meeting. Yeah. Not that I, I'll talk to Carolyn about that, but I, I'm not. I don't have a great answer. I guess it was really meant right. to be like an in, like an initial kickoff meeting with them. But what what their role is is to engage with the public in a series of meetings, and I don't have all the details of that engagement plan. But I imagine that something like that would be something in the future as well. I just, we're not prepared to guide a tour on next Friday. That's all. We actually canceled it because of the, it was last Friday was with the extreme cold, you know, mm -hmm. um, top of the levee along the river in wind chill conditions like that is, is not, was not ideal. <laughs> so. We'll see. Well, thanks again for um, <laughs> sitting in with us tonight. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. Take care of your night. Nice to be here, baby. What do we need to do to disconnect, or does he just have yeah, a Yeah, I think he doesn't have the agenda. Okay. You can go whenever you want, John. Well, I mean, when he mentioned political, what he's referring to is the Corps of Engineers authority is going to be coming before the Supreme Court again. And it used to be from the planning board perspective, 
the Corps of Engineers was in charge of navigable waterways. Now they're in charge of streams that feed into the navigable waterways. They're, now the little rivulets, they were uh, telling somebody, it was an underground uh, river or a stream. He cannot build a house there. So this is in Idaho and in this, and it uh, cases in Michigan too. But you can't build here because this little stream will feed into this stream, which feeds ultimately into a navigable waterway. So like any bureaucracy, they're expanding their wings mm -hmm. or authority. Yeah. But uh, the question is, how far did Congress mean for them to go? Yeah. Well, didn't they change some of the perk laws over the last few years where now there's lots more building lots available because the perk rate's different? Well, that's Title V in Massachusetts. That's not a national issue. Uh, the the this one in Idaho is is the guys finally going to bring it to a head. So there's where the political issue is. I mean, they were almost going to downspouts. I don't remember, remember Randy when we were presenting to the uh, uh, the industrial park. The Army Corps of Engineers was in one of those. And then they backed off a little bit as far as their authority is concerned. Uh, so well, every, everything, all so the things are changing. Everything everywhere. is political. And so yeah. thank you for yeah. putting this on. It's, yeah. it's informative. Yeah. But I have a, a question about that it really concerns me about the managing of all the uh, dams in, in the river. That's, I think, is a major thing that you were saying. Like, uh, uh, who is going to coordinate that? So we need we need an answer with that. I don't know if you can help. Like, say, like who is coordinating that? Because would it say like nope. one of the flaws that happened was like a. Uh, 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 here was not nothing happened. Like when one was done, they say that it was a, a flood. Who owns the dike? Yeah, yeah. I I know the Corps of Engineers has the right over it. I think the town owns it, but there the Corps of Engineers has an easement, I believe. You, I mean, they have the ultimate authority to do whatever. Um, I own the land underneath the dike in Hatfield, and they have a right of way to yeah to do it. Now, who manages it? Does the Corps of Engineers, does the town? Well, the, that's, it that's depends on the situation, I think. Yeah. Is there a way to find, with this committee, to find an answer? Yes. Who they, managed that? And if there's a way? Well, for, that's what he was saying. No, yes, that it must be done. So if there yeah. is a way to start a coordination, because that's a major thing, a major thing. Oh. Is like, is, is there is like a hurricane or water so, going on? And, it's it's Catalina, it's, it's first light and power. Who has come in and they've bought the dam and Turners and they've bought the waterway in Northfield, the one yeah. where they pump it up and it down. And so they're the ones who own it now, but they are a utility mm -hmm. and they it's get some power, power from it. And, and there's really a tide sometimes. Well, there definitely is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Steve can tell you that. That makes a whole lot more sense to do dam management than it does to try to. Build up this dike. Yeah. And think about it. It was two feet on the riverside. The the bike path is already two feet lower. That means you're gonna go up four feet. Mm -hmm. Just in that one really? just in that one spot to the same. And, and, and we have to do what he's referring to as compensation fill means we have to take that amount of dirt out of that area inside. Mm -hmm. So some farmer is gonna have. It doesn't uh, work that way. That's the way it works no, now. No, compensatory storage does not work that way, Joe. The way it works is... Well, it did in Hatfield. Well, it's not supposed to. Uh, I don't know if I can draw on this board, but I'm going to. <laughs> it has to be the same level. Right, so if that's the dike, and this is the farmland you're talking about, yep. and then they want to raise this up two feet, yep. they can't come in here and dig two feet down. You have to take... At that at same this level, elevation you have to yeah. take out at this elevation you put in. So yeah. You can't come in and dig a hole because there's nothing uh, that's going to be high enough inside here to do that. I was trying to be the overly dramatic. I understand. <laughs> right. So anyway, sorry to go back to this about. So if we know who has that, who controls that, 
is there a way the town of Hutt oh. get really engaged? I, in, in, I don't know how. Yeah. I mean, they're they are a private utility. That's I don't know if you can control that... their actions. There, yeah. those dams aren't there for flood I think prevention. You, you Alexandra go, Dawson would know, Randy. You'd have to go at it from a federal yeah. at level, least from I the think. State level. I, I, well, can't the best, I think the federal, federal government licenses them. Yeah. And so, it's every 20 or 30 years, and they're just, I don't know, they just, 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 just relicense them. Yeah. So there's not a whole lot you're going to do. I think Joe Comerford about that. Yeah. But he also <laughs> said that right. even with all the, the Dam yeah, with management, so certain good. certain yeah. times it's not going to matter. Yeah. It's going to flood right. anyhow. Right. So you just have to listen to what they say. And and Hadley's not the only town that FEMA is doing this I free like mapping. The Amherst map. just went through it. It's all the way up and down yeah. the Connecticut River. Yeah. Well, they well, isn't this like up to Canada and all the way through? Well, probably in the whole country. Yeah. What what is the Connecticut River? Yeah, you'd be surprised That's if you saw the map, which they're anticipating what he's just talking about this little triangle. Yeah, uh, North Hadley, all the way up the uh, the little rivulets that come into the North Hadley pond, like on Knightley Street, it's a flood area. All of that is a floodplain. Well, the other thing you have to realize too, Joe, is they're going to change the map. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to flood. That's going to make them feel good that we've got this area covered because they're saying raise everything up two feet. Does that mean tomorrow, if it rains hard, the river is going up an extra two feet? I don't think so. Do you so. think it's political in that they're looking for more revenue from the people who pay in for FEMA insurance, which is pretty expensive if they are in the new designated FEMA area? I don't know the answer to that, Joe. I, I don't think it's possible. I'm skeptical. I know they've gotten Sometimes hammered. The politics yeah, yeah they've way. gotten hammered the past several years, especially out in the Midwest. Well, look at your homeowners' so, rates and how yes house insurance has just gone up. It's stunning to see oh, how much it's gone up in yeah. the last few years. Yeah. Well, just do you know anybody that but has to buy flood insurance? Yes. Uh, I'm asking Jack. No, you, I don't. It's ridiculous. It makes your homeowners insurance look cheap. Exactly right. right. That's what right. I heard too. Yeah. yeah, I heard it's not. It's not really well, expensive. Well, a house on have, West Street. Steve, a house on West Street probably buy? five grand. No, I don't. I don't. But I've heard that it's too Jerry Well, Jerry Well, not Jerry 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 they decided to move that blue line. Jerry that blue line, line is Middle Street. Right. Right. It's basically your backyard. Well, well, as long as it's the backyard and not middle well, that, that's, what, that's what it'll be, Peter. It'll be, right. it'll be coming up that bank somewhat. It, it will, the top of the bank will, will look like to me that's what the, the limit will be. Right. So you'll be safe. The back, the, if you go down Middle Street, if you go people's yards, it goes out to about an eight feet, foot level elevation. And then it drops down into the fields that are between down. West Street oh, and yeah. Middle Street. Route 9 by Applebee's would be flooded. It was in 38. Yeah, well, so again, just because yeah. they're going to change their numbers isn't going to change nature. Yeah, right. Right. Well, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. yeah, and we've been pretty lucky over the years, all in all, to not have a flood lately. But, you know, our time, like Kentucky and Missouri, or so many of these other states that have just been pounded. It's not going to be a flood of record. We have one in 36, one in 38. You're safe. Yeah, yeah. Well, the next one. Follow up to Catalina's point. I, I thought that was very good. So we have these thirteen dams on in Hadley that we have no communication. No, not all, 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 all down the river. But we have no liaison, no communication, no. Well, they're in other towns, right? Yeah, there, we there, have there, not but I think that's an interesting thing. You know, should there be talking to a state representative? Well, that's what I'm saying. What it yeah. is of you know, to have to state reps of Western Mass yeah. until it's getting bulky. Sure, it would be good if in a couple months when they have some results to present yeah. that Joe Comerford can be there, Dan Carey can be there, and have some state reps. Right. I I maybe if even you ask them, they would show up. What? I think if you ask them, they would yeah. come if they're available. Yeah, they yeah. Seem to that be... is a very yeah. good point. But it's not that. anything we no, had but to be on it, right? To try to, to bring attention to it, yeah. To have a contact person. The I'm last time it. this was a major flood was 2011, mm. Hurricane Irene. Uh -huh. right. And what, yeah. what flooded then? Ah, uh, extensive damage up and down the Connecticut River, extensive mm. because there's so much 
of that map that wasn't even shown. Well, that's that what toward, I was trying to figure out. Like they just if there were lots of flood, yeah. where do we have to let it flood? Where I mean, I, I hadn't even thought about that before. That they we have to let some areas flood. Mm -hmm. We can't just have a dike all along Hadley. So it's kind of that would cost billions and billions. You see the water that we had over the two weeks ago, I don't know if it was in that two day rain that we had, how high the river was so low, and then all of a sudden, psh, mm -hmm. well, like you said, mm -hmm. Holyoke's controlling it for their water. But if you've ever gone there when there's heavy rains, high water, yeah, they're controlling it, but there's not much on the offset of the dam. So yeah, it's funny how they're able to control it for their water back and up. for their energy usage. But what's on the downside of it isn't much, you know. It's, it's it, you're thinking of some way, you know. You see in Holyoke they have all these canals. You know, you think about okay, any way of doing a canal system or something for an overflow system to going from around the bend by the dump, over cutting through. I mean, you, you, this guy needs to that we just had the Zoom where with about forty five minutes to giving options, not just saying. FEMA wants this for raising it up two feet to saying these are our options. These are the things that we can do. Yeah, he didn't really get into the you really didn't, you know, just, I, mean, I know he's ended the beginning of the stages, but if we don't know, we don't know. Give us the options to think what the options, like you yeah. said, like I said, for the dike, it's going to be millions of dollars for just putting up that riprap, the steel and everything else just to stopping the erosion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think what he said was that they're looking at different options right now and doing cost analysis. Right. And, you know, I think it makes a whole lot more sense to put a new dike along Bay Road than it does to fix the bike path. Oh, my if, gosh, yeah. if that the new line is going to be up on Middle Street, you just fix the bike path and don't do the Bay Road, then that's going to open up all of between West Street and Middle Street. Mm -hmm. And there's, I mean, there's... I guess there's probably not a, a ton of houses in there. There's enough, but it, so then you look at all right, what's it going to cost the homeowner accumulate accumulatively, everybody to uh, pay their flood insurance every year versus what's going to cost the town every year mm -hmm. to build this dike. So well, there's also all that land along there that would flood. Yeah, but that I mean that typically happens. Uh, I mean again, they're going to raise up. The, the number by two feet. It's not going to, it doesn't mean that tomorrow when it rains, the river is going up two more feet because FEMA said we want flood elevation two feet higher. Right. Yeah. But it's, we have to yeah. keep in mind that we are in a climate change. That's why we are here. Mm -hmm. And what happened in California, it, it, you know, these different it, places, yeah. It can happen here. So we need to have a way to protect, uh, yeah. like a action that we can take to protect whatever can happen. With the climate change. Yeah. So if one first at least a uh, baby step is uh, connecting communication with all this down and have a regulation, at least if someone or the that they say like uh, if there is happening, this action is to be taken to protect all the land in yeah. here. So we need but that. then they're gonna yeah. So that's a fair yeah. point to have I mean, some sort of dam communication can yeah. save a lot of money on trying to build a fort around yeah. downtown Hadley. And keep in mind also <laughs> what the engineer was talking about is not something that's going to happen because he wants it to. The town has to approve it all. Right? Yeah. Because the yeah. town's going to end up paying for some yeah. of it. Yeah. And it's on it's on town of Hadley land or Hadley residence yeah. land that would have to be purchased to do it. So and to his point, there will be public hearings or meetings to come and and speak your piece, ask your questions. And at that point, once we get closer to knowing where they're coming from, as Jack said, you invite the state reps and senators and whatnot, and then talk to them. Say, hey, what, what can you do to help us? Mm -hmm. So Doc Z left, but I'd be curious on the floods of 36 and 38, did it actually flood where the dike is or did it come back up from the south? It Sorry. cut through. It cut through where the dump is. Mm -hmm. That's okay, why the, that's why the dump is there. There was a big hole there. Okay. Hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. we need to see if they're gonna have so all yeah. that can be. And it probably explained. did all the above, Jack. Well, probably came through there and then around the back came, also came yeah. back up too. Yeah. So Jack, you did good arranging this meeting. Yeah, um Carolyn was really good about getting him in. And I wasn't sure how it would work by Zoom, but a shout out to Alex for setting this up. That oh, excellent. Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Well, very glad that he called in at seven. <laughs> Everybody came in. Andy should listen to this guy. Yeah. They should. He'll be on YouTube. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there'll be, there'll be, there'll be seven, seven people to view it. Like and subscribe, everyone. Uh, hey, we have a few more minutes, and I just a few important things to get out. I do want to mention that I'm going to be meeting with Mimi from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, and we're going over some of the things that they found out about the older buildings that have it. So she has the numbers, man. So I'll be meeting with her tomorrow afternoon. When you say numbers, what are you referring to? Um, their suggestions for energy improvements. Okay. Well, and the numbers utilities. are finally the el electricity. There's things that count for all. And once that all not comes right. in, we, we qualify for green communities. So once it all comes in and they're writing it up, then we can submit it and see if we qualify for the green community grant. Nice. So we're doing well, that with checking the old building. The work. <laughs> yeah, that's always a challenge. Yeah. Um, do you want to say a little bit about compost? Yes. So um, we uh, got a grant that we are going to create a banner to publicize compost. As you know, compost, um, if you don't compost, it creates me methane, methane, methane. Methane, methane that is very powerful as a poison. And it is a simple thing that the thing that we can do as an individual is compost. We have in the transfer station, we have compost. People have in their own houses compost. So we need to promote that, that, that if, uh, uh, to protect, to reduce the amount of carbon or you know, poison in, in the atmosphere, um, we can do a simple step as a compost. So we are going to call the community. It will be artistic thing. Everybody will uh, send uh, um, art and pictures and everything. And we create a banner with the, all the pictures, not all, but selected pictures of people send and say compost, compost will create life. And then um, ways people that can, can have information about compost. So also we will, we will do postcards uh, and put it all around town about that, encouraging people to compose. So that, that's one of our things. Yep. Could you get somebody to come in and do a presentation on the appropriate way to do it? I mean, I, well, we've, yeah. we've been, my house has been doing it for years, but I don't know if I get the good stuff. I'm you know, okay. you hear about all this wonderful You're dirt. not getting black stuff at the well, bottom? At, at, yeah, <laughs> at the bottom after about 10 years. <laughs> so I'm, I'll, I'm, I'll I'm, send you some info. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so are you using a bin or you have a box? What do you uh, rest of a wire. Really it's totally, yeah. Yeah. So I took yep. some wire that's probably two by three squares and made a big cylinder out of it. Uh -huh. And that's what I put everything in. And, and, and then you put kitchen scraps and then put like dried leaves yeah. uh, mix. Yeah. yeah, it's not working. Well, I wish I, I, I are you supposed to mix it? You yeah. are. Yeah. You're supposed yeah. to lift the air and you know, lift, lift it up. Yeah. It goes twice, three times as fast if you mix it. Because it needs air in there. And also, it needs to be wet enough. Outside, it's and wet. Sun. Sunshine. Yeah, you know, we got we have that. Okay. So, but that's <laughs> well, what I need sunshine. I would think to see if we can have, if we can get little video okay. about how to compose better. Well, there's a video on uh, the web thing. They got to work out. Climate yeah. change. Yeah. Oh, it's good to know. Good. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Randy, you know, we have really more. I'm curious. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Got a little door at the bottom to lift it up to get dark stuff. I just mentioned it to Chris. But, but yours should you, work. Yeah, can I give you my card too, by the way? Yeah. So we can, it just sounds like yours is not coming out. Oh, oh. It's got to be. It's out in the sun. That is the way he's been up with the bacteria. Yeah, I would love to just bring it in there. That's, that's, that's too bad. Yeah. The, the, you know, the sun, next priority and without the, Michael, yeah, without yeah, Sue. The way it is, you know, the more to right. turn it. And green community on the way. It's a pain to try to turn it. You know what? There's a tool you can get. 
It's a stick. Um, it's like an auger. It kind of, only it's got like, like these two wings that stick out that when you shoot and they can flip. When you go down, they flip up oh, okay. and then pull it up and it, they flip out. Got yeah, it. and you can just pull it up. Like you don't have to stir. Yeah, okay. I use a pitchfork or a stick in mine. Okay. If you're walking and down North, if you're it. walking down Mount Warner, come back. I have a double compost pile and you can see. Okay. But I do flip it every now and again. Um, you know, tomorrow's gonna be a nice day, I'll flip it. Mm -hmm. We'll come to my house and flip mine. Show, <laughs> show me how to do it, Jack. I mean, sometimes have email me or it. something, give me your address. I'll come over and look and see what you're doing. Okay. Well, ground and troubleshoot. Okay. Okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Fancy. It's fancy. Probably driving Tesla. Uh, <laughs> is it going down? Yeah. So it's there. You got good stuff under there. Yeah, but I can't get it out. Why? If you. <laughs> Because it's got stuff on the top. So how can you get it out? So, well, that's why I like, like a jacks. He has three bins. So if you have a bin here and then one next to it, you can. Yes. You kind of let one retire for a little bit. You let exactly. it kind of do its thing. And we alternate. Add any new to yeah. it. We alternate. So one is on and I'll stir it in in the spring, which is coming soon. And then for the summer, I'll do the other side. Just and that'll be good. Composting. There are so many videos and uh, there's so ahead. much information. Why don't you take uh, put it in our website some summits? How to do it well? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's, that's great. great. That's great. Hey, we have one last thing that's yeah. important just on how we act or react to it. So we have the offer that we can apply for a student intern. Yes. But it's already day 102 of the school year and things are. You know, in another week, they'll be on February vacation and then all that. We need something specific. Yeah, what do we need this person to do? You tell me. Well, for me, it will be uh, very helpful if this person can help us to, when we have the po the postcards, to put it all around in the school, in the town, in the um, all the stores in the town, the library. So someone who is Who's helping us to put that around? That's like three hours of work. Yeah. That's not much. Would yeah. we have a regular task for this person to do? That's why we are saying like this is one from the compost. That's part. one. Yeah, yeah, I know. But yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's over. It's a little bit of time over a short period of time. Yeah. How old is this person? We don't know because we apply. They they would read our posting and then apply. So we don't know if they have a license. Yeah, okay. Yes. So they are from, the okay. So they from the high school. Yeah. From the high school. So yeah, it's intern. almost an opposite of what you we need want. a temp intern. I mean, I'm just thinking about what what you get what happens at a typical meeting like this. And my guess is you're gonna if you get somebody, you're not gonna be able to keep them busy. That's I I know we don't have anything. It's the opposite. I, I we need somebody coming. Carolina saying that. that and in that situation, it'd be great to have some help. But you to try to keep somebody busy, you're going to go out of your mind trying to do that. I just don't think the yeah. local high school offered a chance for a student intern. Oh. How do we keep them busy? Yes, I, okay. I don't think it was a year that we were doing our climate day uh, event. Yeah, they would they could do a lot in coordination with that. Right, we're not and, doing that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not this year. No, nope, that was last year. That was last year. We need exactly. somebody at, at Hopkins to get a, something going at school. Well, that's what I was thinking, mm -hmm. like peer education mm -hmm. or peer. But then what Anna, um, what's her name? The Annie superintendent. Kizzy. Yeah. I mean, that's what she wants is student generated, like let them come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. for Composting school. That would be great. That would be great. amazing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, that, the schools where it works, that's how it happens. Yeah. Right. Like in Franklin County, for example. Yeah. And the other side of it, too, I guess, is you get them on board, they come to your meetings and see what, and just get well, a feel for what's happening. Yeah. They can well, start to be becoming mm -hmm. involved in quote unquote politics. Right, right. So it was about two years ago, we had an unpaid 
student. We just had a student member of the board. It was good. Yeah. She couldn't make it all the time. She yeah. worked at Cooks. But the there flavors. were other kids at school that were involved too, weren't they? There were a few, but she was the most active, the most vocal. It was wonderful to have her here yeah. and get that mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did they have a newsletter in the school? That I think they do everything online. Right, but it may, maybe that person can also be uh, reporting in our project mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, uh, to the, in the newspaper over there or in the online thing. Uh -huh. Writing articles. Yeah, right. writing articles, of, but short things about this is what happened with the dig. This is what happened with the compost. This is what happened with the, this project that we are doing really with the green community. So what I'll do over well between now and our next meeting is I will reach out to Ruth Ann Fitzgibbon who's the teacher coordinating this and Annie McKenzie and I'll just ask a little more and we'll talk about it and then also tomorrow I'm meeting with Mimi from Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and we'll go through so we're we're not going said. over this tonight okay it's it's Only much too much well. so well and it's not populated with the right numbers right yet. So what she, Mimi, is doing is taking what energy source, not the utility company, but just the private auditing group, is taking the information about different buildings and really is trying to see what should be some of our priorities. Now, these priorities can just be suggested priorities. Yeah, they don't have to stick. I, all of us got it. You didn't get that? It was, yeah, it was emailed. So you, are you guys meeting once a month? Once a month. Second Thursday. Well, I will come when I can. Did, Thank did you. Randy yes. And if you guys need me for anything, if you need me for anything to, to go to town hall and go to that for you for whatever, yeah. you just get a hold of me and make sure that I'm on your email list for the, yeah. the meetings and stuff. Yeah. Do you prefer email or like text if it's an emergency or what? Text is, if there's an emergency, okay. Jack, you can text me. You can call me. Okay. And uh, but typically an email is fine. Okay. But I appreciate what you guys are doing. Uh, and your dedication to this is impressive to me. Wait till you see the energy reduction plan. <laughs> no, it's really it's. Really impressive. Kathy's throwing it down. How did this all is Thank this you, from the green community? Yes, yes that's what we've been doing. This is, um, this is like the town. It is like it we can have heat pumps and everything. Have we've been working on not just this. like all. Yeah. You guys looked at, at talking to anybody about um, putting solar panels on the town buildings? Is, is, is that <laughs> well, it's not part of this, but the school, the school committee, they're looking at doing that with the schools and i was wondering should we share this once it's we should corrected we should we share should. it with we, them. i think about that all the time yeah and because well, the schools are perfect because they have all that flat room. yeah well i have panels on my house i know jack has them on his house and the amount of money that i save is unbelievable yeah me too yeah and the town ought to be able to and you put some money towards something like that and make a huge difference. Well, we, we're waiting for panels to go on the library. We have the money. It's just whatever, Carol. Uh, the there's something wrong. There's an issue with the part of the roof. Sadly, yeah. it needs to yeah. be repaired. Yeah. And the senior center is solar ready with that yeah. metal roof. Yeah. So, so, so what's today? February 9th, yeah. I've made 233 kilowatts this granted year. the first few days of february were unbelievably good and we didn't mm -hmm. have any snow blocking it but it's just amazing i might make 400 kilowatts in february now most years would be covered with snow and ice and i get nothing but wow this snow free year how long have you had your panels there um i've had them for about 20 years but we recently replaced them and the new ones are amazing well mine are three years old i think yeah and do you uh, over generate? We will, but you haven't yet. But you well are. because I just replaced mine. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, it also doesn't help that um, EverSource has changed the scale. They don't quite give us as much as they used to. Yeah, which doesn't make it the best. But uh, we have another little family camp that any extra energy we get goes to pay that electric bill. Yeah, nice. 
Did mm -hmm. you put in mini skirts and stuff? Yeah. Too? Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I mine are I think about three years old, and right now I I'm about a eight hundred dollar credit hmm. over that time, and I think the first two months we had to pay twenty two dollars or something like that. Hmm. So. It's, it's so a awesome. meeting, I don't know if it was their most recent meeting, but so the school committee is seriously looking at, I guess one of the schools needs a new boiler. It's time to do a major replacement. Mm -hmm. And um, so they're looking into upgrading rather than just putting the same old thing and they'll save I me. Mean, should I send them a, a copy? Of, I should send them a copy. I'll send and, you a copy of yeah. the energy. Well, yes. And the new Inflation Reduction yes. Act is just amazing. It's just incredible with what you can save and what you can get. Oh, and we're yeah. not just saying that because you're here. Because <laughs> I hear this wonderful idea about it, how we can get them in action about the solar panels in. Well, so let me, time. let me text Paul Pfeiffer and just say, hey, any more news about energy? Because they were calling in somebody to do their own energy audit. Uh -huh. And I'll just say, hey, where are things at? So one of my goals on the select board is to get that moving. Excellent. So cool. any, yeah. any of the town any. building. Oh, well, you, you are going to love. Excellent. So I just, it, again, it, it doesn't so include sense. solar, but um, feel free. Yeah. Everything else. And, and I'm not sure if you all heard just, so Amy was just too busy. It just wasn't working with her schedule. And she really apologizes for not being here to support us. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say that to all of you. Mm -hmm. She actually wrote a very thoughtful email mm -hmm. and just saying sort of sorry with everything going on. Mm -hmm. She's got a lot going on. Mm -hmm. Do we at some point want to kind of figure out like what are, you know, green communities is almost like, what, like what are our next steps? What are our goals well, for this year? What are sort of our action plans? Just let me send this to you because that's what this is all about. Yeah. So the, what's the, in our some of our, three yeah. years, some one of, of our three. next priorities we're working on. I got the yeah. email. I haven't yet. I, I didn't dive into it. It's impressive. Here you go. Here, just take a copy. Because I'm trying to for like find my little piece. What like what? Well, my goal is looking at Valley Bike. If there's ways to make that fix, there can, the solar is always a need. Okay. So there you go. I don't know that much about solar because I have so many shade trees around my house that I. You're not a good fan. No. Well, not everybody and so is. I don't know. Mostly, what I do is I just live in the cold, and I like my house is very high heat. I know it's a two pants. I wear. I, I'm a collector of wool sweaters. What what kind of heat do you? Have? And I wear a hat in the house. What? What kind of heat do you have? I have a, a supposedly high efficiency boiler and propane. Oh yeah. Well, okay. Get it, get it. But it's very low. But it's but I, I mean like I. Spend you don't want to use very it. little money on that. So what you when you have the heat possible. turned off, I guess you do spend very little money. What's that? <laughs> when you have the heat turned off. Oh, yes. It hasn't been that cold this winter. <laughs> and Alex, if you want to wrap things up, that's cool. Thank you, Bill. No. Well, I think we're so we would like over. to be so off camera. Just, you gotta you gotta uh, adjourn the meeting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The meeting. so oh, I would like to um I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. <laughs> Four people seconded it at once. I love it. And you know, it is, it's, I have to say it's kind of interesting. It was just after the last town meeting where all of a sudden we had lots of visitors coming in, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. No, I think they kind of force us to I, think more deeply. Well, and some of them are very knowledgeable. Yeah. Yeah. And that's cool. what I like. Peter's I amazing. I love the history. Yeah. These guys have Fabulous. lived here for a long time. I feel like a, in, you know, well, a newborn. <laughs> you, you got them scared at town meeting, mm -hmm. and now they're coming to make sure that you're not taking anything away from them. Well, and they're no. they're going to get to the point, if they're not there already, that they realize that you're not a bad group. You're not out to, to, to get anybody. Yeah. You're trying to help. Right. And no, I like them. So when you say yeah. solar, yeah. I think they already uh, realize what, what we need. Like, 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 oh, really? I have two huge really, We need action. No, no, I understand oh, okay. that. <laughs> 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 Is that what you're? Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah.
starting to kind of they get it more solar. I would be happy to. Jackie, it's on the boat. Very well. well, I mean, all the boat. Good. 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 Like Jack was. So, um, you know. Well, we had everybody second the vote. So <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's close the meeting officially. Yeah. So we had lots of people second that motion. Right. Let's vote if we're going to close the meeting. Yeah. Yes. Right.